thanks to the Vienna Data Science Group for the invitation uh, to come here and present what we are doing at the Semantic Web Company. Um, to be honest, I haven't been here. This was uh, before. It's my first time with the, uh, the data lab, so I'm quite impressed. Uh, it reminds me a little bit uh, uh, to the years when the Semantic Web Company was founded, because we started really in a, a garage in Vienna in the fifth district, and it looked like a little bit this uh, kind of room. And yeah, we were three people uh, founding the, the company, uh, so I am one of the co-founders of the Semantic Web Company. And yeah, uh, I would like to show and talk about uh, the basics of Semantic Web Technologies and what we are doing. But first of all, I would like to introduce our company a little bit. Um, it always works. It's correct. Okay. Let's do the manual. It's least. Yeah, have a second try. Oh, okay. That's it. Okay, um, yeah, the Semantic Web Company was founded about yeah, uh, 12 years ago. Uh, we are based in Vienna. Uh, we have no business angels and uh, no investors, so we just built that up by our own, privately held. Uh, we at the moment about over 30 employees working in the area of Semantic Web Technologies and Big Data. Um, we are also participating in uh, research projects uh, in national and uh, also in, in uh, international research projects or European founded projects. And 2016, we are proud of that. We uh, were named in the KM Worlds magazine uh, 2016 uh, that we are under the 100 companies that matter in knowledge management. Um, so the Semantic Web Company is a software producing company, so we have produced, developed our own software product, which is called the Pool Party Semantic Suite. Um, we got our first release in 2009, when the product was ready. We are currently in the version 5.5. Um, the software itself is W3C compliant. We have already about 100 installations worldwide, so our customers are everywhere in the world. Um, we are investing 50% uh, of our revenue into the development of the tool, and we offer on-premises and cloud services, so people, uh, customer can use also our cloud services, and we are also proud of that, that we became KM work, we are listed in the transepting product 2015, and again this year we are also listed in that list. Uh, the product itself uh, offers nine components. We have uh, on top of it the data portals and collaboration platforms where mostly the user uh, interacting with the, uh, the search and, and metadata management uh, on top of applications like Drupal, uh, SharePoint, uh, Alphaesco, and other uh, systems. We have uh, the knowledge engineering part, uh, where you maintain and you build uh, taxonomies and the SARI, um, the ontology management, and the link data management, where you connect data uh, with knowledge graphs. Then we have uh, the part on the bottom, it's content enrichment and data integration. Uh, the system has a text mining component which uh, allows to uh, automatically tag information uh, with content out of uh, Dexon and the Saro. The um, so the main parts of our software is taxonomy anthology server and the other one is entity extraction and text mining. Okay, so now I just uh, 
hopefully can give you an insight how this works. Uh, maybe you are aware of it. Uh, Google already uses knowledge graphs in the background. So if you enter a search string in Google, for example, for a company, uh, Google offers you contextual information in a box. It's mostly, yeah, I think it's on the right hand side of the search uh, results. And to get you more information about uh, the specific uh, term you have searched for it. For example, if you search for Accenture as an organization, it gives you uh, information uh, how many employees there are, what their revenue is, and stuff like that. So, additional information uh, which can be, could be useful. So, this is something um, Google calls it a uh, knowledge graph. They're using a knowledge graph which is working behind. Uh, of the system. So, what is, what is a knowledge graph? Um, so, things but not strings. So we have these blue bubbles here. We have things here, um, and these things represent something. They have ob this is a kind of object. So, this is uh, a way how to organize your the knowledge uh, uh, in your company or in your organization. Uh, we have here, for example, Venice is, is uh, this, this, this concept has a label Venice. It can also have other uh, links, uh, links to a picture or it has a, a, unif uh, a unique uh, identifier. Uh, and also these things can have uh, different labels. Uh, you can use it for synonyms, for example. Said Mark Square can also is also uh, named Piazza San Marco, uh, and these things can also be connected to each other. Um, this, for example, has a broader term uh, which is uh, Square or Piazza, uh, has also a unique identifier, and this is just a, a small part of the, of the knowledge graph you can create. And what what what? you can use for the maker out of it. We have documents where uh, a text extraction technology or text mining technology is able to find these uh, concepts in a document and, uh, and do this entity extraction and uh, the document can be connected uh, to this, this concept in a knowledge graph. So, what does that mean? So the, the traditional approach uh, of searching uh, content uh, over several uh, content repositories is uh, yeah, you put in a search string and, and you search full text about uh, uh, in documents. But the problem is if you search, for example, uh, this person who wants to find uh, uh, content about European countries, it's going to be difficult because Europe is not mentioned in the document itself. So what is the what you have to do is to add some tags, some some uh, metadata information, and the, the, the traditional approach is to add tags to each document. So you have uh, your content, and then you can put labels on it or tags, whatever. Uh, this is mostly. Uh, in, in many applications are already available, but it's not knowledge graph based. The graph based approaches, you have a model where you add Europe uh, as a concept uh, to the, the graph and say, okay, uh, Norway, France, and Austria is, uh, are parts of Europe. And then you can search. Here. So both ways are. Uh, possible to find relevant information. So, but it gets, gets more complex. So, if you want to uh, look about okay, uh, documents uh, from EU, EU, also EU member countries. So, what you have to do, you add an, a text on, on, on the left hand side uh, to the uh, docu uh, documents manually. And then the graph-based approach, you just add a new concept, which is a broader, ah, it's an error of Europe, and say, okay, EU is France and, uh, and Austria. So you put just only one note on it, and you're done. And, and, and the uh, traditional approach, you have to add it everywhere. 
Okay, then uh, another question would be, uh, which Shomer only French-speaking countries? You have to add again uh, French to the, the right uh, documents uh, in, uh, that uh, to take them. Uh, in the knowledge graph, you just only need to add a new concept, uh, which uh, is called French speaking. So you see, also you have uh, all also poly hierarchical uh, mm, uh, possibilities to put uh, information in a knowledge graph. So the problem is if, if something changes uh, or you, uh, in, in the um, in the in the data also you have to just to, to, to re retag the uh, information and, and things like that. This this, this will be not uh, really be handleable anymore. Uh, but on the other hand side, you have the graph best approach. You just need to maintain the, your model. So these are the things we get out of that. So we have no reuse of metadata. Uh, there are no network effects, uh, metadata resides on silos, data quality is hard to measure, and it's not machine readable. Um, and the knowledge about metadata, uh, it's the opposite of the metadata per document, is explicit knowledge models you can uh, create, reusable and measurable. The metadata is machine processable, uh, the standards based metadata, and link able metadata the open silence. So this is yeah the, the view of uh, the architecture. The mostly some the architectures are mostly in place. You have uh, below here uh, systems, uh, content management systems, document management systems, uh, whatever. You have a meta meta data layer mostly in place already in these systems, and you have the interface on top of it. But Mostly missing is the semantic layer, which uh, does the metadata management for you. Okay, uh, which standards are we using? We uh, use RDF. This is just uh, a, a, a subject predicate object const construct. Because so we, we, we store data as in triple stores. We don't uh, use related uh, uh, relational databases for that. Um, so, for example, Semantic Web Company is an uh, organization, or Semantic Web Company is located in Vienna, so you can uh, put all this information in triples uh, and store it in triple stores. And uh, you are able to sparkle so, uh, on, that, on top of this uh, data. Okay, just, uh, just uh, to explain you uh, what, 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 what schemas are available. So, um, on this RDF data, we have several different schemas available. Uh, we are using uh, the simple knowledge organization system schema, which uh, allows you to build taxonomies based on uh, this approach. You have um, a, this uh, dots here, which are re uh, representing uh, co concepts, and these concepts have uh, Preferred labels, uh, which is uh, or alternative labels, which are a kind of synonyms. You have the definition, you have uh, relations, you have narrow, and so on. So, you, on top of that uh, schema, you can build your very simple uh, domain model, uh, which is which you can use for your uh, metadata management. And everything is based on uh, W3C standards. Uh, which uh, are widely used already. Uh, so, from simple scores to large knowledge graphs, so as you have seen, scores is really easy to understand and very simple uh, to maintain. Um, you can uh, generate your first version uh, about a specific domain you're interested in. Um, you can uh, extend uh, and curate your taxonomy based on uh, the information you have in your CMS system or document management system. You can do some corpus analysis uh, to, to extract uh, frequently used terms and stuff like that out of your document repositories. 
uh, to, to maintain uh, the, the feedback to the existing uh, knowledge model, then you can uh, use or extend your schema if you need, so uh, because it's cost uh, the expression of, expression of cost is not is very limited, but you can extend it uh, and do it additionally a schema on it, um, and then uh, if you if you would like, you can enrich your data with a linked data uh, information which are already published in the web. Um, we have here. Uh, a cloud of linked data sources. This is actually uh, 2014. It's quite bigger now, but we, we have now a new uh, visualization of it. But uh, what's, what you see here in the, in the middle, uh, which is mostly connected, is the DBpedia uh, repository. DBpedia is the RDF version of uh, Wikipedia. So you are able to, to Sparkle. So Sparkle is that query language which are uh, used for the uh, to query triple stores and the information which are stored in RDF. And you can get information out of the DBB connected with your own data if you want. And uh, there are really a lot of different uh, sources available with different uh, domains, uh, ge geographic, uh, the SARI, media, uh, government, uh, and so on. So mostly of them uh, linked open data that you have also linked data so these are uh, also uh, some uh, knowledge modes which, which are not open but can be used uh, if you pay something or whatever. so you can make use of that uh, by using sparkle as I mentioned already um, you can build your interfaces you can make analysis uh, of data just using that sparkle uh, uh, script and, and uh, get out uh, data uh, uh, analytics. You can also connect data to each other, uh, whatever you need. But there are also challenges. Um, so it's, it's always uh, we have uh, implicit semantics. We have yeah dubious provenance because we don't know if this uh, is something we can trust uh, or not. Uh, there are sometimes licensing, licenses missing and uh, some unclear topicality, so different formats. Uh, so this is all the challenges we, we face every day in our work, uh, how to deal with that. Um, just would like to, to show you a small, a small demo where we use uh, the technology. Um, in this table, what we were doing, we get information out of the PubMed uh, repository. So this is um, an online service which provides abstracts about medical uh, uh, research uh, uh, topics, uh, and uh, they offer that uh, open source. You can use that. You can call them, and so on. And we just uh, grabbed. Um, this content um, here on, 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 on several diseases. We have neoplasmas, we have cardiovascular diseases, and nervous system diseases uh, um, extracted out of the database. And what we have done is okay, we, we used for this demonstration, the MESH thesaurus is a medical uh, heading, subject headings thesaurus. It's a quite huge RDF thesaurus about medical things. Uh, I think they have, I don't know, 60,000, 70,000 concepts uh, in there. And what we have done is here we have this nervous system diseases and we get out. Okay, well, what what is this actually? This is uh, seizures, meningitis, stroke, uh, brain injuries, and so on. Um, then we are using uh, uh, GeoNames thesaurus, which uh, has all countries, all cities, all 
every place mostly in the world uh, stored in the, in the taxonomy. Um, and then we use this both, the SAURI, to extract entities out of the documents we have from the botnet uh, storage. And we, we, we show, okay, what, what this is all about uh, uh, nervous system uh, diseases uh, and where, where uh, which, which, which uh, cities or which countries are uh, somehow mentioned in that text and we, we can uh, annotate that automatically with uh, this text extraction uh, uh, text mining technology and we have metadata on that uh, information and then, then we are able to search on, on based on this metadata the information and what we additionally did is to, to see, uh, we, we, we did a look up to the DPP uh, uh, source with, because we have the um, geonames, the Sarah in place, but we don't know which, which uh, uh, human development uh, index they, the, the different countries have. And this information is missing in the geonames itself, but we, we look to the uh, DPP link data uh, repository because there the information is in place. So we see CAM, we see Austria which uh, HDI uh, index they have and we get that back in our database. And what you can do here now is compare for example uh, countries with uh, a lower uh, HDI index and compare it with countries with a higher HDI index uh, what are they? What are the the, uh, the documents uh, <coughs> uh, describing? So what what they are writing? What are the problems? The mostly we see so brain injuries uh, in, in Latin, uh, so lower developed countries are just more to a topic as in, 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 in higher developed uh, countries. And if you can make some kind of comparison and, um, and doing analytics on top of that. So this is just a small demo what you can do with taxonomies and also with linked data information. Sorry? Yes? I have a question regarding this example. Um, does this, I don't really understand what the, what the background of this is. The uh, HDI is the selection criteria that has been determined uh, to set up this page. <coughs> The HDI is so we have uh, each each country is uh, has this, uh, is, yeah, has an uh, HDI, it's a Human Development Index yeah. factor, okay. and um, and we can select uh, just only documents where countries are somehow mentioned uh, in in in, 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 uh, in connection yeah. with one of these uh, topics, which are lower than. Uh, uh, so, so this is where the taxonomy, taxonomy comes into play, that it categorizes each of these uh, documents based on which country it is in. Yes. And then uh, which uh, country has, and which is related, uh, if the content is related to the nervous system diseases. This, uh, this is the solution. Yeah. So you can also select uh, other diseases, for, for example, uh, I think this is uh, Kreislauf diseases, and, and then you get only uh, results where uh, Kreislauf, uh, uh, so this cardiovascular <laughs> diseases uh, are, are relevant, and, and you have here are the uh, synonyms, uh, not uh, the, the symptoms. Well, the symptoms are only uh, yeah because. The system knows uh, because of the taxonomy these are symptoms of these diseases.
Yeah, and just a few examples where this technology is also in use. Uh, some of them are our customers, uh, like here. Uh, one of our customers is, is working in the renewable energy sector, providing information about how uh, renewable energy could uh, be used and, and doing some optimizations in energy, householding, and stuff like that. Uh, they are offering an API, which is public available, uh, where you can um, use uh, extraction service uh, based on a, a renewable energy and energy efficiency desire. So people which are working in that area are able to connect to this API, which is a service which is free available, um, to, to annotate their own content. They can use that for their private purposes, but they also can use it for uh, sharing information. So they have the possibility to also say, OK, um, I put my content in. It should be available for public. And then they have, uh, we have a, a huge uh, repository with all that uh, information, uh, other organizations which are acting in the same kind of domain or area, uh, and, and, and can do this. Um, automatic annotation and to connect all the information to each other. So this is a very nice uh, opportunity to connect information worldwide uh, from several organizations all over the world. It's called Climate Tagger, so you can um, go there and you can register and you can make a use of that if you are working in that area. On the other hand, it would not make sense in other domains, but this shows how this could work. But this could also work for other domains, for sure. Uh, CTCN matchmaking, this is also um, um, uh, climate technology platform uh, where our, uh, the control vocabulary is um, Match, uh, allowing matchmaking between problem statements or so, uh, countries do have some problems and we are trying to match uh, uh, information uh, and solutions for, for their problems uh, based on, on, on taxonomies and control vocabularies. Health Direct Australia, this is uh, yeah, a huge health uh, platform Australia, where they put about 100 trusted sources in one from different uh, sources and do the harmonization uh, of this content by uh, also by using, a, I think this, they, they are using the, the mesh thesaurus, this medical subject headings thesaurus to connect information and make it accessible. Yeah. So this is uh, a search interface on top of uh, the uh, a triple store where the information is stored. We have here uh, facets where you can filter the search results. You just want to see which publications have been made in, for example, Biberbach. You collect it and uh, see uh, based on, on that uh, filter and, and you said here, um, and which topics, for example, uh, this is it, um, I'm not really a medical guy, what, what, what that means, but um, this allows the people there, okay, to identify uh, documents, uh, specific topics, they can choose uh, different. Uh, we buy visualizations. I don't know how it works. Yeah. So the, the, the cumulative impact factors per quarter and therapeutic areas, for example, and see over a timeline uh, who uh, has uh, doing. I'm not that not good to interpret that. <laughs> Uh, uh, visualizations because I'm not really in 
that deepness of that what, what they are really doing. But uh, I think this is the publications where infectious diseases have been published uh, and so on. And, uh, yeah. So they get a, a lot of uh, information out of that, and they can uh, yeah doing some uh, regulations on that. And, very interesting uh, information what they need but this was it actually so um, I'm through my presentation and uh, yeah so I hope uh, you have got a little bit of the idea what semantic technologies are so they can be used in very broad uh, different use cases <coughs> and uh, so if you have questions uh, Please let me know, I'll try to answer. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, would, I was wondering the, the primary uh, field of application is search, and the, the, the second field would be like of uh, analytics and uh, visualization on a, from a very high, high level. <coughs> that, uh, in search is mostly the, 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 the highest, uh, the, the, the organizations want to improve the search. They want to uh, because th the problem is always they have so much information stored in their databases, in, in different uh, databases, uh, and they cannot make really use out of it because it's too difficult to, to search for it. So, but if you have a, a domain specific meta model in place, which can you put on top of it, and do it you do automatically uh, entity extraction. So each document uh, will be analyzed and connects it with the domain model, you have the, a very good possibility, a way to, to, to search over this meta model, this domain model, uh, and see uh, how uh, things are connected to each other. And, and you, you, know, you also find a lot of more information because uh, if you have a synonyms in your uh, domain model, uh, if you, if, for example, Jaguar, uh, this is a classical uh, case. Uh, you search for Jaguar, uh, you, you get a car or an animal or, uh, or Apple operation system. <laughs> um, but if, if you have your domain model uh, in place, you, you can see, okay, uh, if you have Jaguar, you can select a, 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 a because Yaga could be a broader term of, of automobile. For example, you can uh, just add automobile and Yaga, and then, then uh, you have that connection. And the system knows what you uh, are looking for. Because uh, if, if there is, if it's in a domain model uh, uh, for automotive industries, uh, you won't find uh, Yaga documents because, uh, because of, of, of uh, any models. Yeah. But I think this is, yeah, also the linked data enrichment is also a strong use case. Uh, I have my data and I want to enrich the, this data with uh, information from other data sources. For example, uh, DBB is very heavily used, uh, actually. So we have new content and we want to see, uh, get more information uh, out of, of this DBB uh, repository. And this is nice because Wikipedia contains a lot of information about mostly every domain. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is also a nice case. I have a question. Does this technology have any technical limitations? Like uh, it's the biggest volume of the data you can process or support? Or it doesn't? No, it, it's always somewhere a limitation. <laughs> uh, but I have no numbers actually in, in, my, in my head, but uh, we are using the technology on very big data uh, applications, but whatever big data means. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, the Sarai above, um, uh, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of concepts is no problem. And uh, also the document uh, uh, processing, uh, I think somehow if 
few milliseconds to, 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 to uh, analyze uh, one page. Uh, it's, it's very fast. So to build corpus and to annotate information is quite fast. Okay, okay, so then one spec there. Can you speak up, please? Which, which triple stores we are using? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, Sesame in place. Uh, we are using for bigger, bigger applications where the performance is very important. Virtuoso, it's a commercial triple store. Um, we have uh, GraphDB. Uh, we are so we are able to connect to, to, to different uh, triple stores. Okay. Depends on what the customer needs. And, yeah. I have a question about the error estimates. Uh, first of all, what do you experience with uh, the data sources themselves, uh, like from the list of the data cloud? And then, uh, how do you um, estimate the, the error in the result? Is there a possibility at all, or anything? Uh, I don't know if I got the question right. So do, you, do you think the measurement of quality of? Yeah, data quality, like in geo names, uh, you have, uh, I don't know, around 1% error, maybe. Um, Combining different data sources and in the end, uh, how does it uh, work out? In, in, in um, yeah, the quality of 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 of, of this domain uh, uh, ontologies. I don't know. I, I I I think I don't understand. Maybe, maybe I can tell an example. Here names, uh, you have some place name, you look it up and uh, you find uh, coordinates and um, uh, this is wrong in, let's say, one of the cases. Okay. Um, and um, you use this in some, at some point in your education and you make a query um, where this data is used and um, it, it may be the only error, but there may also be other data sources which have an error. And how, yes. how do you estimate the error? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's not that easy it's because you have um, different information. That may, for example, it might be that in the, in the Wikipedia you have different latitude. That, uh, oh, because okay. I was not hearing. Uh, yeah, this, the quality of data sets is always uh, a, a question, and how to deal with that uh, it's difficult. Uh, so. It, is, it depends always who is maintaining this the salary, uh, how are trust, trustable are the, the, the publisher. Uh, so it's always a, a problem because also the Wikipedia things which I put there, the, how, how should I trust that? Is, is that correct that it's in there or not? Uh, or if it's, it's on general two names, uh, which organization stands behind that? Uh, uh, how trustable? This is just always a question. Uh, which kind of data you are using, and how uh, they are correct, and what to say. But so. Yeah, I have another question. Uh, can this technology? Uh, can you use it with uh, real-time data? Let's say I have. 10 gigabytes of data, incoming documents, and going. Can, can I use this technology to process this data and add to my vocabularies, building these graphs in real time, or it, it's still too difficult? Um, what do you mean by real time? If, if I put a document in there and it processes just instantly? Yeah, just like uh, imagine you have email inbox. And you have yeah. incoming messages yeah. all the time. Yeah. So can I use your technology to build a graph uh, online? You, you don't build the graph, you annotate the, the, the oh, information. Right. Um, and you tag it. This is, yeah, this, this can be done in real time. So, uh, what we are also offer is, is uh, some services where 
for example, um, people are just constantly producing content in, in content management system or wikis or so on. You get just when they save a document, it's, it's immediately annotated. Then. So because the uh, you can trigger the, the, the text mine or the, the, the term extraction whenever you want. So, so can we, we use real time. Yeah. So we have, we have implemented a, a one uh, case where RSS feeds are mm -hmm. analyzed. So you can just uh, look. Uh, get, you can just uh, put RSS feeds in from newspapers or whatever. You you're just interested in, in maybe in a specific political theme or whatever. Uh, you can filter out uh, the news uh, based on if, you know, if it's relevant or not based on the domain ontology, and then you can automatically out uh, annotate these feeds and you can also have a search like we have seen here. If I said that okay, let's. Uh, show me everything what uh, Trump has said in the last week, for example, regarding uh, Islam or whatever. But it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, that was a good point. <laughs> so actually, uh, a political party in Austria is using our technology to uh, uh, to annotate citations of politic political statements. It's very interesting. Uh, your clients have to spend a lot of time in providing, uh, let's say, custom links, or is it usually sufficient to use already existing data sources? I mean, in general. Yeah. Um, <coughs> in the US, there are companies that are specialized in producing tax taxonomies and, and ontologies. Uh, there are uh, people, they are so called taxonomists, which does not exist already here in, in Austria, but uh, this is, there is a job, a yeah, taxonomist, uh, this business card, taxonomist, uh, it's really nice. Uh, they offer uh, uh, taxonomies to specific domains, this uh, the commercial way, but there are also um, uh, the Zara taxonomies available for free. We have, we have uh, several repositories where you can look on and uh, search for the Taxonomies. And the third thing is uh, to, to, to create a new taxonomy, but uh, with, with support from, from existing corpora. So, because the, the, the problem of, of, of most of our customers is that they, 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 they need the, they have the specific organizational taxonomy and it's not available somewhere because they're, they're using terms nobody else uses, maybe, and so on. Um, and uh, what we are doing here is we, we take their content, we, they, they give us a content set about, I would say, 10,000 documents or so, and we analyze this uh, uh, corpus, and we, we see UK frequently used terms and, and how they are related to other terms, and so on. This helps the, the domain, um, uh, as I say, the, the expert, the domain expert to, to create such a taxonomy. And what we can also do is to have a lookup to the DPP there with a source because you have uh, categories there and, and you can make a use of that. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know, in these districts uh, you have that information in Wikipedia, uh, yeah, in DPPedia. You, you just go to the Viennese, uh, uh, Vienna, not Viennese, the Vienna uh, districts and you have that information and you can also get this information out of it and this helps you to build automatically the taxonomy. You don't need to add each district uh, manually, this can do the system for you automatically. This works quite well in specific domains. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, to, to question then we will have afterwards anyway yeah. Uh, I was wondering if it's in, sometimes a need to um, um, maintain the development <coughs> ontology over time so that you have to historize your ontology. Maybe you want to know 
which countries were in the EU in the year 2000? Is this a problem? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So uh, the, this, this taxonomies have to be maintained somehow. They need to be agile. And uh, there are different uh, approaches uh, to keep that up to date. So we are using uh, feedback from, from people. They're working in uh, their systems like uh, uh, SharePoint or whatever. They can put also feedback uh, if there's something wrong or, or, or maybe a label is missing because it's not in the taxonomy because there's something new and uh, so people uh, have uh, the possibility to have short look on what, how, what, how is it tagged uh, a document and they can manually add or delete tags if they want. And this, this is something that the system in, in the background can uh, uh, recognize and suggest changes to the taxonomy expert to, to add or to delete uh, uh, concepts. Because uh, the system is able to see okay, which concepts are never, never used. So there, there is a concept in the, in the taxonomy, but it hasn't been used for 10 years. Uh, so why, why should it? In, in the taxonomy and you can kick it out. So. Yeah, but my question was more, um, what if you are interested in, in uh, different versions of the of the ontology, then uh, maybe you want to have, want to query some data from the year 2000, how the ontology was at that time, but you're also interested in the current state. So you actually have to have all versions of your ontology, if this is a mean. Uh, uh, this, I would say, is a research topic. <laughs> How to uh, deal with uh, historic data because uh, data was, or, or terms are also used differently, in a different meaning in the past and stuff like that. This is actually most is often uh, questioned uh, how to deal with that. And uh, so we are working actually in a research project uh, with uh, uh, they have uh, heritage uh, culture information and stuff like that. And also uh, dealing with historic uh, documents and so on. And yeah, it's not really I don't know. I don't know also. Thank you.